aka Seems Over Fantastic. Let's go in and meet today's guests. Hi, I'm Travis from Mod Cup Coffee. And I'm Justin from Mod Cup. And you can find us at 479 Palisade Avenue, opposite Riverview Park. We've got one of the most stunning views in New York City in the whole tri-state borough. Hi, we're at Mod Cup in Jersey City Heights with Travis Clifton and Justin Hicks, the owners of Mod Cup. So the first question I have for them is, how did you two get together and launch Mod Cup? Uh, I guess it was a stroke of fate, really. Um, I've been putting the concept together up here in Jersey City for about 18 months, two years, and went out to a coffee seminar class roasting school in San Francisco. And met Mr. Hicks right here, and it was the final jigsaw to get it together. So. So that was in San Francisco, so how did you get to Jersey City? Uh, a long collection of emails and uh, I don't know, it was just that it was a good opportunity and, and we had very similar ideas and we thought we'd, we'd do it out here in Jersey City where a community could use something like this. Initially Justin was coming to set this up and then go back to Ohio where he's from, but then fell in love with Jersey and stayed. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. So, um, so why Jersey City Heights right here instead of you know the you know downtown area where so many people go? Well, I mean, the initial concept of the business wasn't to say in the Heights. Um, I live in the Heights. Justin has settled in the Heights too. Um, the cafe opening in the Heights was a result of us both living here and our original roasting operation being based in, in the Heights. And the fact that we served. Um, at the Riverview Farmers Market every Sunday throughout last summer uh, and found that the community up here were A, great people and B, very underserved for for coffee uh, and, and let's be honest, it's nice to have a cup of coffee with that view out here, right? <laughs> Excellent, yeah, absolutely true and the Farmers Market is fantastic. Yeah, they do a wonderful job over there but the initial, the initial um, I mean, building of the trenches if you like or digging was done down in Hoboken, right? Yeah. We used to take a cart down there every day, every Monday, through Friday, sometimes Saturday and sometimes Sunday, at like 7 o'clock in the morning through till 5 o'clock at night. All day long? All day long, no matter what the weather was. Snow, Snow rain. rain. Wow, that's Wind. interesting. And it was with Ryan the Warfront as well, so we got some we got some interesting days down there. And were you set up um, like outside where the Wiley building is? Or the, you know, and so you must have had a lot of traffic because of that. Yeah, we had a lot of traffic. Um, it wasn't an intentional move, once again, to take that spot. It, it was one of those things, again, where a hand was forced because to operate a mobile food vending license in Hoboken, you had to be 75 feet away from a bricks and mortar establishment that served food or drinks. And as you know, in Hoboken, that's almost bloody impossible anyway, <laughs> other than Sinatra Drive. So we settled there through a hand being forced down there, but actually turned out to be the best spot to be at. Again, it was with a view. Um, and just been said when we opened this cafe, actually, we'll never open anywhere that doesn't have a view in New York. Because <laughs> it's the same <laughs> location of being out with a view in New York, you know. Um, and also because you've got uh, Wiley Publishing down there, Thompson Reuters, who else was down there? Oh, oh man. RDS, Royal Bank of Scotland are there. So you had all these offices and none of them, I mean, had, a, uh, had an outlet for coffee. And let's be honest, the, the working world runs off caffeine, right? Which is why it's the second most consumed product on the planet after war. Um, other than like three blocks away, so we sort of fell into it. It was wonderful. Awesome. So um, let's talk about uh, the coffee that you serve. That's fresh coffee, and sort of this uh, this idea that we have um, that we're drinking fresh coffee, but actually we're not. Well, that is ultimately the first thing that we bonded on when we when we met at this class was the. Justin had been in the specialty coffee industry for a number of years as a barista and had just started to uh, um, uh, roast as well. And I think when you move into roasting, you saw that fresh element has been really important, right? It's like the most crucial component. I thought it was the biggest the impacted flavor. Um, of course, you want a good cup of coffee, but how do you make that better? It should be freshly roasted, not just brewed and served. It, it needs to be roasted. So that was the biggest key element to why we and I, and I mean, at the end of the day, and I'm going to get scientific and geeky for a second, but coffee, and we make a number of analogies when we talk about coffee. 
We say coffee is like wine, depending on the region of the world it comes from. It's going to have different flavor notes that are imparted into it by the soil, by the farming techniques, by the altitude. Um, and we say coffee is very similar to bread, and this is where you get that fresh thing. Because when you bake bread, you put it through a chemical reaction, which is the Maillard reaction, that stales once you've, once you've completed that chemical reaction. And we all know that as consumers of bread, right? For example, if you were to walk into a bakery and say, can I have some fresh bread? And they said, you know, I've only got bread that was baked uh, two months ago. You know instinctively that that's going to taste like crap because it's some stale. <laughs> I probably wouldn't need it. You wouldn't even need it. Wouldn't buy it right? Or buy it. Well, when you roast a coffee bean and, and take it from its green incarnation and roast it and turn it brown, it goes through the identical chemical reaction. And therefore, stales as well. So what almost all roasters have done to extend the shelf life of coffee so that it still has a flavor after it's staled, which we say is 18 days maximum um, with Mod Cup, is they'll impart a flavor into that coffee bean. And what that flavor they impart in is, is roast. So we've been conditioned for 50 years to think that darkly roasted coffee is the A, the best kind of coffee, B, has the most caffeine, and C, it is like this wonderful thing that because the Italians gave us dark roast that we should all consume, right? Well, the reason that roasters have darkly roasted their coffee historically is to extend the flavor of the coffee bean indefinitely. Because wow. once you put a coffee bean through a long roast process, a dark roast process, what you're tasting as a consumer then is not the coffee, what you're tasting is the carbonization of the coffee bean. Now you as a consumer can tell me that that's your taste preference, sure, but what you can't tell me is, is that coffee's fresh if it was roasted five, six, seven, eight months ago. Right, and so the typical um, yeah, coffee places that most people frequent, let's say, um, what, what age would we be sort of talking about if you have any idea? Like, uh, you know, we would obviously you be not talent, you know. Nope. The different the difference is, is there's a best buy date and you could go into these major retailers and you could see a best buy date that's still three, months. four months ahead, even twelve months. Starbucks have coffee beans on the shelf that has a best before the date for two thousand and fifteen. Now they'll argue with you but it's put into a vacuum sealed bag. It's still the same as buying bread. You if if we all could, we'd all buy bread from a baker, right? Uh, as opposed to frozen bread that's sitting inside the freezer, and it's the same difference. Right, right. But yes, the Justin's absolutely right. Almost you can't tell when it was roasted, which is why we as a company and the majority of, of what people call third wave coffee roasters will date their coffee bag to tell you the exact date of when it was roasted. So you then as a consumer know that you have, well in our case, because we're pretty stringent with it, a uh, 14 to 18 day period in which to buy that coffee, grind it, brew it. Awesome. Much more of a form of honesty than, than anything, you know. Right. You know when it was roasted. You know how long you have until you should drink it. So, um, so here in the store, uh, people can come in and get beans. And um, would you recommend that they uh, grind them at home when they need them, or and how how should they store them? And um, and, and what types of flavors or places do the beans come well, the first, from that you're... That the first question we ask the customers when they walk through the door, if they're buying cold bean for brewing at home, which is the most important question, is how do you brew coffee at home? Because depending on how you brew coffee at home, is dependent on what area of the world you should buy beans from, or what particular beans are you having, because certain areas of the world suit other brewing methods better than others, right? So if someone comes in and says that they brew with a French press, then we'll recommend this coffee. If someone says I brew with a drip machine, we'll recommend this coffee. If we have artisanal brewers that come in and say use a Chemex, then we'll recommend ABC coffees. You know? mm -hmm. Um, so that's really the first thing we get into is to try and interact with the customer as much as possible to find out what they're trying to achieve out of their own brew at home. Right. Um, as far as grinding coffee, listen, not everyone can afford to have a grinder, not everybody wants to have a grinder in their home. We recommend, of course, that you should have a grinder in your home because as soon as you grind a coffee bean, you're extending the surface area of that bean into thousands of different particles and the staling now is immediate within a minute. Um, so really you want to grind just before you brew. However, listen, not everyone can do that. We're not, we're not Nazis here. We're not going to say we're not going to grind the coffee for you. You've got to buy a whole bean and buy yourself a grinder. We'll certainly grind the coffee for you, you know? But we're going to recommend then that, listen, if you're buying this level of coffee and you're paying attention to the freshness of the coffee, can't you hear buying it, then it'd be a wise investment for you to pick up a grinder. Right. 
So what should um, customers expect when they come into Mod Cup? Uh, essentially what they should expect is modern coffee. It's our, it's our hashtag, drink modern coffee. Essentially what modern coffee is a full interaction between a barista and a consumer. Freshly roasted coffee, no coffee served within 14 days after the roast date. Banging soul tunes and rock and roll tunes playing. Uh, an interactive barista, someone who's actually going to talk to you. No internet. Uh, our motto is unplug and connect. I hate coffee shops where you go in and everyone's on a goddamn computer looking at their own screens. <laughs> coffee shops were the beginning of revolutions in the past, you know what I mean? This is a neighborhood spot where people should talk to one another, it's no internet. Uh, but basically what you get is freshly roasted coffee and super knowledgeable and experienced baristas that will make you the best goddamn cup of coffee you've ever had. It's a coffee experience that's tailored to the individual. It's no longer what we serve, what we try to serve, what we like and what we can get out of it. So it's always tailor-made to each other instead of, this is a batch brew of whatever, and here you go. So the next time I come in, instead of just saying, I'd like a nice coffee, I should talk to you about my preferences. If you've got no time for asking for preferences, just ask for the iced coffee. But if you've got time, sure, or explain what you're looking to get out of the experience, and the barista will try and tailor um, the coffee to fit what, you, what, you're, what you're trying to get. Excellent. Other than dark roasts, because we don't do those. <laughs> So I'm just wondering um, where the beans come from and how often do you travel to look for new source, you know, sources? Well, there's three major grain regions in the coffee world, right? Africa, Indonesia, and Central America, or Latin America, as you can include Brazil and Colombia and that. So we buy beans from all three regions. Uh, we use the best importers of green coffee in the world. We only source the top 5% coffee beans in the world, so when I say it's good, it's top 5% good. Uh, as far as how we source them, we use boutique importers that deal directly with the top farms in the world. And just in here is an internet junkie that goes searching out looking for farms. Now when you use the internet to find farms, those are generally Latin American farms because those guys have got internet. You can't find African farms of high quality using the internet, you have to travel to source for those. We're a young company at the moment that doesn't really have the funds to get out there looking into these regions for farms, so we rely on boutique importers that have the very echelon of the best coffee beans. Having said all of that, Justin did get us out of the first directly trading coffee, which was a real coup for us as a company. Solid. So. And that coffee bean was from Colombia, where we directly traded with the farmer. Now, this thing about direct trade has to be a handshake with the farmer. It was a digital handshake. However, we do plan to travel out there at some point within the next three to four months, uh, hopefully for the next harvest. Get, get knee deep into coffee shoes. <laughs> awesome. So I know that you're located here in Jersey City Heights, um, opposite uh, Riverview Park, but I'm also wondering if you have any other locations that you could tell uh, listeners about and um, and where they can find you. Well, we do farmers markets all over Jersey. Um, that's the biggest thing we set as a company when we started was that we wanted to be mobile. We wanted to be out there with a message telling people about fresh coffee on the streets. A bit like the ice cream man truck out there, we have got our own truck on its way. Nice timing, my dear. <laughs> uh, we imported from France 18 months ago the biggest, baddest, sickest truck you'll ever see in your life. It's a 1969 Citroen H-Van, and when I say it looks like the Terminator, it looks like the Terminator. Or as Justin says, like some out of Mad Max. Uh, we've had it restored over the last 18 months into North America's very first coffee roasting mobile vehicle and that will be based in downtown Jersey City and anywhere we can book it. In fact, we start on its inaugural voyage. Do we call it a voyage with a truck? I think it's a voyage. It's a voyage. Uh, out to Paramus to the PGA Barclays Playoff Finals at Ridgewood Golf Club where we'll be sling in espresso off old-fashioned local espresso machines and giving coffee roasting demonstrations and brewing people and all sorts of good stuff. Wow! Awesome! Oh, we also have a roasting facility but you can't buy cups there. That's where the magic happens. Uh, so farmers markets, cafe in the heights, 1969 Citroen, and the cart has been retired. But who knows? Anyone can come and retire them. Right? Might go back down to Hobo Convention. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, being on Susie Brandtastic, thank and uh, I wish you the best. Thank you, Susie. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I don't always drink cold brew, but when I do, I drink nitro. Cheers, Jersey City. Good, excellent. Happy to go. Very good one.